<clears throat> Boy, we had quite a time in our last <clears throat> couple of episodes. It was frightfully it's, brilliant. <laughs> it's good to be back. Okay, so I'm David the Bruce, and these are two of my very best friends. Oh, he's amazing. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm going to start with Gomez this time. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I wanted to switch places, so you read my mind. <laughs> it's already getting oh, that, spooky. Ooh, that's right. You, you, you have switched places, huh? No, I wanted to. And huh? I wanted to switch places. Ah. And I don't know why it didn't happen. So how uh, would you be at introducing the rest of our crew here? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> so... With me being Gomez, this is Morticia, and Slappy, uh -huh. and David, and our new friend Megan. <laughs> right. She's behind the camera, but she's still and real, very real. <laughs> Megan is going to do this thing today with y'all, or you're going to do a thing with her. Uh, African curses or something? Hey, what is that on your shoulder? Is that an African curse? No, it's our friend Thing. Thing? Yes, Thing. Well, he looks thing, like he's rather... Thing, actually. <clears throat> Handy. He is. <laughs> Some hexes are so friendly to stay with you for life. Oh. That's just what I like to. Well, so you asked somebody to lend you a hand and they took that quite literally, right? <laughs> he just took it off for a while. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like a chip off the old block. Okay, well, let's just stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> because it is frightfully brilliant. Morticia and Gomez and a few of their friends. <laughs> Slappy and our awesome voodoo doll friend because we're going to talk about what was Africa, right? Yes. And I thought, let's bring our friend out to share this because we can. <laughs> and we showed him on an episode last year where we did favorite Christmas presents and I thought it would be fun to show our favorite Christmas present as a voodoo doll because it's weird like us and it's... Mm -hmm. So he was on TV already. And this is Hex too. The... Um that's uh, the store hex. Yeah, or we reviewed the them on our show. Oh, okay. They're awesome. Yeah, I was telling her before we started that they actually have a store in Salem. Did you look at it? It's super awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. They use like authentic stuff with sellers and they advertise how they don't just do like the cheap knockoff hokey stuff and like, you know, all the dolls no, are made by hand. Nice. Yeah. And, yeah, and you can tell when you touch it like that's mm -hmm. real. Yep. Um, okay, so today we're talking about an experience I had in. Africa when I was living in Niger. Um, I used to be a Marine and I worked in um, the embassy. I lived in a house um, with other Marines and um, three of us started experiencing something that we did not understand and, um, and it, what it was it followed us as well. So. Um, that's it's good that you said that because a lot of people don't know that it's not just always in a place. It can follow people. It definitely did. Especially follow, yeah. if you have a gift, which obviously you do. Mm -hmm. And from the last show, if you guys missed it, go check it out on archives or YouTube or wherever you need to go because we talked about Salem family roots and these wonderful people are related to Salem witches. <laughs> so, like, there is power running in the blood, literally. Right. And so it's like they know this and they follow people that have it. Yeah, I think so. And this particular entity follows people, I think, more with trauma um, in their background. Because the people that I, I noticed it would attach to around me were more vulnerable. I don't want to sidetrack, but it has to be asked. I know mm -hmm. um, a few people who have had childhood traumas. Mm -hmm. um, and I have seen that they have a lot of abilities, like a lot of wide open. Do you think they're it, more open? Do you think it causes yeah. that? I mean, uh, well, so yeah, maybe yes. I, th I think there's several ways you can you can be more open to the spiritual world. Um, I didn't go through childhood traumas. Uh, my my traumas happened later in life, but um, I was it opened me up more t and to a darker side 
that I had never experienced. One I had of the people that had she had gone undergone just horrific childhood abuse mm -hmm. and stuff that I can't even wrap my mind around. And at one point before she did a lot of spiritual work, you could see like these little tiny demonic little faces in her aura and it wasn't her, it was like these things latched onto her. Oh yeah, that's creepy. <laughs> and it was horrible. I mean yeah. it was just like so, you know, when you said darker. Right. Yes, um, yeah, it definitely opens you up to a darker world because they, they prey on people that, you know, they use your weaknesses against you. They'll use anything to get inside of you, you know, to control oh, yeah. you, to I've, destroy I've seen you. that even when you don't have the childhood trauma. No, of course not. It's and scary, and they'll, they'll make anything, they can even make something little, just this giant issue. Mm -hmm. They play on it and emotions and feelings like that. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's, it's stuff, you know, you're minister might or your priest might warn you about um, but and you don't really think they're real but then when, when you experience them it's like holy crap you know, and then like, you're thinking I wish this was just in my head, I know. Was really in my head. exactly <laughs> um, so let's get into the, the story I suppose um, Gomez you were quiet last time too so I'm just gonna do you have any thoughts <laughs> uh, well I had some of my own encounters with the uh, Supernatural, yes, yeah, so all of that resonates with you. Okay, can, good. So we'll have to tell yours if you want to on the next one because I already shared the sit train. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Um, okay, so um, our the Marine House was, is, uh, was off the embassy compound. It was, you know, on its own. And one night I had uh, come off watch because um, we, stand, we stand post at the embassy, you know, three shifts a day. So it's always being guarded, you know. Um, so I came off at, in the morning from evening shift, and the guy I had replaced the night before was awake on the couch drinking a beer. It was like 7, 30, 8 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, um, why aren't you in bed? And why are you drinking a beer at 8 o'clock, you know? <laughs> and he's like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Like, he, his... He was a black man, and he was like white as a ghost. Like he was, he was scared, and I had never seen him scared. Like he was this tough marine, you know, and he was like out of his mind scared. And I was like, okay, so um, he had shift again, and or maybe not that night, but um, I forget how. Wh whatever, we ran into it, each other again, and he was. Um, he finally, I was like, dude, you want to talk about it? Because obviously there's something on your mind, you know? And he's like, well, I went to bed last night after you replaced me, and um, I, I woke up and there was, something was like talking to me. Like, and he's like, it was this African language, I didn't understand it. Um, and then he's like, and then it, it, was, it was on top of me, and it wouldn't get off me. And he's like, I couldn't wake myself up, even though I could see what was going on in my room. And that's, you know, um, counselors call it sleep paralysis. Um, but it could also be a spiritual attack, right? Because you're in that in-between state of asleep and awake is a very, um, it's a very, it's a very, it's a time where, you know, you you're more susceptible to these attacks, you know, and you can see them visually as well. Um, anyway, he's like, I finally got control of my body and I threw it off of me. And then I couldn't go, I didn't want to go back to bed because I didn't want to get attacked again, right? So I'm like, okay, I've never heard of anything like that. And I just was like, you just had a nightmare, you know? And um, like a week or two go by and then it happened to me in my bedroom. And it was, it was almost exactly how you described. There was no language when it happened to me. It just, um, it just, I couldn't wake myself up and eventually I threw it off and then I went back to sleep again and it happened again. And I'm like, oh man, he wasn't like, he wasn't lying. Like this is real. And it was, you know, it was frightening. And then that same week it happened to another Marine. So whatever it was, it had attached to all of us. And it was like something we talked about, but then we didn't want to talk about it. We, I knew, because I, I kept going through these experiences, like, for the rest of the time I was there, and I knew that they were too, but it was just something we didn't talk about, because we, we, we knew how we sounded. We sounded crazy, you know, so, and we're supposed to be tough Marines, and here we are, like, afraid to go to sleep. 
So um, later I move on to Japan. It's my next post. And I don't tell anybody about these experiences because I don't want to sound insane, you know. And um, and the room right next to me, because it was, it was more of like a cookie cutter, you know, like apartment building. Like it looked like an office building, but they threw rooms in there for Marines. Anyway, so I had like, this was my room. And then the next room over was, there were stairs, and then the, the next room over, he, um, he was Hmong. So they're a little more spiritual and open, you know, because they're, um, their culture, you know, coming from Asia. Um, he, he goes into, on post, he's relieving, he's relieving me in the morning. And there's another Marine on, on post with me, because it's a bigger embassy, so there's, you know, more people on duty. And it's, they're, they're friends. And he, he pulls him aside, and I'm hearing this conversation in the background. He starts laughing like nervous laughing. He's like, dude, um, I was, he's, this is exactly what he said. He said, dude, I, I was raped by a ghost last night and he's still laughing about it. And I'm like, Oh shit. Like whatever it was, it followed me. And now it's attaching to people around me. So I pulled him aside later that day. And I was like, look, I overheard what you were talking about. Um, you know, I told him the, ex I told him what happened in Africa. I was like, I'm sorry, I think, I think I gave it, like, it attached to you because of us sleeping, you know, um, in, in rooms that were next to each other. And, um, and then when I went, <laughs> it, it happened again when I was back home, and it attached itself to my brother. I was, like, on leave or something, and my brother woke up, and he's like, Make oh, no, 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 my brother came to visit me, and this happened in, um, uh, I think we were in um, Bali, and he said, Megan, it, it happened to me. And I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, like, this thing is following me. And it it got worse. Um, I, I went through some more, I went through another event, traumatic event, and it got way, way worse. It's like they're feeding on it. Yeah, like, so much, I could see faces. I'd never seen, it was just forms and figures, but all of a sudden I could see faces. And I went, I got back to the States. I, I had been overseas for like two years at this point. And um, I was so like terrified. I, I went to church, I read my Bible, I prayed, nothing was working. I was like, I was doing all the things I knew, I knew how to do, you know, from, from growing up, yeah. <laughs> from growing up Protestant, that's all I knew, you know, like, the, so I went to, I decided to do something else because I was so desperate. So I went to a, a psychic. And, um, she wasn't, she was Romanian and it, she wasn't very good at what she did <laughs> for sure. She was, but I still was so desperate. I was like, I was listening to this woman and it, she kept wanting more money, of course. And like, you know, how they do. And then she's, she told me to do this spell at night in my, in my bathtub. And I was like, well, I, I'm in the barracks. I don't have a bathtub. I just, she's like, just do it in the shower. So I did it. And that night. Oh my God! I, it was the scariest, one of the scariest nights of my life. Thanks for your spell. It made it work. I mean, it was it was constant. It was all night. Every time I fall back asleep, it'd come back every time, and I'd see its face it every it time. Off? I don't. I think it just opened me up to it more, oh. and it was like I could sense it all night long, and it it was horrifying. I still to this day remember that face. I can't get it out of my mind. What did it look like? It was a man, and he was he was a white man. Um, but he was just very, like, s um, s sinister looking, sinister looking, is that the right word You've for it? You've one like that, haven't you? Yeah. It, it was just horrifying. Yeah, it's like kind of, uh, like for me, it's like the language that you begin, begin understanding, language of concepts and spirits and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and you start seeing it more type of thing, because something opens up. Right. So I definitely, I could see it at the other places often before I go to sleep uh, when it's the right time for it type of thing. So yeah, I can understand that. I keep thinking that's your hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically. Uh, sorry, I needed to laugh after that story too. <laughs>
And didn't you, what about the guy you saw when you were 12, though? An elevator or something? Um, yeah, it was like strange. It's like if you see a physical shape and there's, I guess, something superimposed on it. Mm -hmm. and I didn't know what it was. I didn't believe in anything at the time. I grew up in an atheist country. And mm -hmm. I was supposed to disbelieve in everything supernatural. So I see something, and I don't know how to account for it. It's like feels just basically strange. That's all I have reference for. Something that is sort of dangerous for me, could hurt me, but he's not doing any gestures that are threatening me directly. So what am I so afraid of? And I'm not usually like worried about stuff. So it was like a very strange experience. Like, And I knew that I had to run away, and I didn't even have a reason why. Like, uh, he would offer me to this guy, he said, like, you know, I'm waiting with uh, the elevator is open, so come on in. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to take the stairs. <laughs> 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 Isn't that the one you said you thought of as a devil? Uh, you didn't know why, because you didn't have a reference for devil? Like, yeah, uh, I didn't okay. understand why, like, at all. Like, it just looked like it had even certain features that I associate with the devil that I don't know what the devil was supposed to look like at the time. But it's like, you know, like he said, a language. You don't need words. You know something on a primal level. Yeah. yeah. Right. And you're like, I wasn't taught this. And to me, that's because I think we're all probably skeptics until we really experience. Like you said, you thought the guy was dreaming. And all of us are skeptics. And then when you're like, I didn't believe in this. It's like, you know, the, the ones who do, I think it's cool, but they can look for it and see it in everything. And you're like, no, this wasn't mm -hmm. a big deal. It was just this. Right. You know, sometimes a cigar is a cigar, but when you don't <laughs> believe it and you see it and, it, and it's like, okay, I didn't have any reference, I didn't know this, why is it happening, then you have to really, like... It's also about expectations, in a sense. You expect mm -hmm. a demon or a devil or something to do something spiritual, they say your soul, whatever, but that's not how it really happens. You see psychological changes because that's more right. practical, so <laughs> you don't know what to expect from them. You see a movie, you think, okay, I'm going to start, uh, right. my head is going to start rolling. No, <laughs> it's not physical. Yeah. It's, they, they play with your with your psyche. Yeah. This guy was saw, he was like a real guy. He just saw it imposed over mm -hmm. him. So do you think it was attached to him now? Like Yeah, it was probably something that he probably might not be aware of. So I just uh, associated with him because it came from him, but it doesn't mean that it was necessarily conscious. It was probably either some kind of a ghost that was feeding on him. He seemed disturbed, but not unpleasant, not dangerous, not like one of those crazy people. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. But I just knew that something was with him, and I didn't like that something. I knew that I should watch for it and live before it attaches itself to me or something. So I wonder if um, maybe the um, blind impairment can open you up to those things more. Well, I guess our senses are supposed to be more developed. Heightened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people say that, but you know you don't what? Think so? I don't know, honestly. Okay. It's like animals. We did a show on this, David, you know, the one about the Ouija board. Um, can animals, like, Sense. see things? Yeah, and, and sometimes I think people think, oh, they see so much more. Some can, some can't. My bird and my brother's bird were a cage right beside each other. Mm -hmm. And after, I'm going to shorten this because we already had it on a show, but these roommates were using a Ouija board. I was like, shut that down, not cool. As you know why, that's not a good idea. Yeah, no. So, I'm yeah, I, like, stopped. I came in, and they were doing it. I shut it down. The next day, stuff's flying around and moving in the room. I'm by myself. This is not cool. I'm like, great. This is, these people are gone that were doing it. I'm here dealing. Yeah. And my brother's bird was warning me off this certain area, and every time I'd go near it, he would freak out until I backed off until the thing oh finally gosh. left. But my bird, two inches away in a different cage, just right beside him on a was like don't care not noticing right and he loved me and he had loyalty for me I mean he was like a brother and he did not see it but it's moving stuff so I'm going okay but you can see the thing moving mm -hmm. but he's probably not even looking away from his mirror because he's not sensing anything and my brother's bird is going just wild if I go in a certain area when I back up he stops and it wasn't near him so he saw something so I think some animals do and some don't just like people okay and yeah, I would agree with that. His senses are better than mine, and mm -hmm. he can see better. I mean, we're both legally right. blind, but I'm very legally blind, and he's legally blind in one eye like me, but the other eye, he's got tunnel vision. Okay. But you can hear, you can hear always better than me. You can. <laughs> Sometimes. No, <laughs> most of the time. Sometimes I hear better, but 99% he's got it. So I think sometimes, and like, my, his is a lot more reliable than mine. Mm -hmm. Um... 
like I've never had an experience like I did with you. The ghosts usually come to him. Yeah. And I was like, why didn't she come to you? Because I was kind of half resisting out of surprise that I don't do this. And I knew I was in my way and I was afraid of not being believed or seeming like, of course, I have to cap yeah. on your incident. And I don't want to do that. I don't do that. You know, those people, mm -hmm. you always feel like you're being one of those people. <laughs> that you don't, and I hate it when I project <laughs> onto me things I don't like. And, you know, when somebody's having a thing and they're talking, I don't need to be the star of the show. Mm -hmm. I like to just chill, and I was like, I don't want it to seem like I'm capping her, you know? Right. So I don't want to say anything, and I was like, okay, she's not going to like it as far as Bridget. It's probably who it was. If I don't say this, because she wants <laughs> Megan to know this, so, oh, my God. Here we go. And I wish they had come to him. She had come to him, and I was like, why didn't she? You're more comfortable. And then I thought, maybe she wanted a woman. like For sure. So I assume she just... I mean, look what men did to her. I'd be better, too, right? <laughs> He's so sweet, though. He wouldn't have a I guess women did it to her as well, but... For her, it was mostly the men that accused her, because yeah. they wanted her land. Um, so, in case you're curious, we can end with this if you'd like. Um, what ended up happening was my mom called me one day. My mom was very spiritually, very, very spiritually in tune. She said, Megan, what is going on with you? And I was out of the Marine Corps at this point, and it still it had continued, so this was like this was ongoing for two, two and a half years at this point, I think. And um, I was like, Mom, I can't, I can't, I can't sleep. Like, there's something attacking me when I close my eyes. I was so, I was so spooked. And she said, I, I had a dream that something was wrong and, you know, that you were being attacked somehow and I just didn't know. And she's like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I was completely broke at this point. So, you know, because I was still trying to find my way in the world after the Marine Corps. And um, she's like, I'm going to fly you to California, and I want you to sit down with my priest friend. Um, who And they perform exorcisms. I don't know if it's like in you or just around you or whatever, but they can get rid of it. So she flew me in, and for a whole week, um, I, just, I was prayed over by different, you know, um, different spiritual Christians, Protestant and Catholics. And then... Um, and then at the end, I went to see uh, Father Dean. At, it was like a monastery type place in California, and um, and he he prayed over me, and he told me he's like I can see it. It's at the bottom of the hill. It didn't even bother coming up here because it's a coward. And he's like once he told me that he's like it's a coward. You know, um, it was like it was gone. It was just it was gone, and. Um, I, I've had experiences since, but, um, well, I definitely have, but it's all, it's always when I open myself up to it, whether it's because of, you know, um, uh, addiction or, um, I'm, I'm getting, I'm too, I'm getting too far into depression or, um, I'm disbelieving in my faith or whatever it is, you know, that just opens me up to it more. So I, I'm very... I, I, I protect everything around me. You know, I'm very, I, I like, I love how you guys do all this, but like if I slept around this stuff, I'd be freaked out, you know? That's what so I need like said. really holy Both stuff of our moms around me. freaked out about <laughs> sleeping here. Both of our moms. And, and it's just the imagery of it. My mom know? raised me on horror. And I know, I think it's great. I, I love had it. Slappy sitting here, and she's, <laughs> I have a fold out bed I bring out for guests, like, mm -hmm. and I had it, and he was just still sitting on the couch, and I was going to move him. She goes, you fucking leave that thing in you. <laughs> he has, if you turn off the light, his eyes are glowing and stuff. And I was like, Slappy's a sweetheart. He's our mascot. What are you talking about? But no, I'm going to take him in the bedroom, okay? Yeah, I couldn't sleep with him either. He's a Don't sweetheart. No. <laughs> I'm scared of dolls that move and stuff. Like, I have nightmares about dolls moving. But he's not a doll, and he doesn't have real hair, so I'm good. But it's like, um, I think it's if what we're afraid of. Like, this stuff is like our friends. Yeah. And the things that would protect us from the bad stuff, so it doesn't freak us out. However you look at it, right? Yeah, it's, it's your just, perception. I mean, sometimes something's just bad. If it has something right. attached to it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just bad energy. But if it's a perception of, like, what I see pumpkins are harvest and goodness and bats are, like, night and seeing something in a different way. Right. Um, things like that. And um, it's just about what you feel about something. To me, if you said I had to sleep in a room with one of the first automobiles ever made, I would probably have a mental snap. Just no. Or even dolls or dolls' heads with real hair, not okay. And I, you know, some dolls collectors, doll collectors that would be in heaven. Right. So it's all about your associations. and. I agree. But yeah. if you ever have to crash here, we'll take some stuff down. <laughs> <laughs>
it's all about association. Absolutely. But um, I've seen some creepy uh, antique stores are kind of scary to go in sometimes. Yeah. And thrift stores, didn't you get creeped out in the last thrift store? Both of us did. Yeah. yeah. Just items that could have stuff attached. Yeah, like, you gotta you gotta clean them. However you clean your items, um, just sunlight can do that. You know, bless it with holy water or holy salt. I'm such a big believer in holy water and holy salt. That yeah. It just like I put it just right around my bed at night because I'm. Again, Try like tar water. Really it's scary. amazing. Tar water. Yeah, yeah, it's um. You can look up online all the different things it does, but it is a very strong protector against bad stuff. Mm. Um, we get a lot of stuff around Halloween when the veil's thin that just wants to come bug us because we can sense stuff, you know, and whatever. Yeah. And you might be right about the, the lack of vision because it doesn't distract, I think. Yeah. Like, you know, you're looking at stuff. That's, you get, yeah, that's exactly So right I think right. it's not because mm -hmm. you can't see that this is better. It's mm -hmm. because it's lack of distraction. It's like why they attack you at night. Right? You're open I think, to that I think also that also we go to when we dream I think we go to the astral where souls go when oh you, for sure yeah, yeah and so I think that's kind of where they hang out too yeah. so you're kind of going into their territory whether you want to or not you don't have a choice right. we do do you know how to do shields on yourself at night like I mean I'm not familiar with what you mean by shields but yes like you know protect like when you go to sleep to set up boundaries and even in your mind to go it's just a mental like image of whatever you see as a strong shield, just like you're not getting through. Just like mine feels more like a stop sign. Like a friend showed me his, and it's just like stop. Like nothing gets in here. And I don't know how to describe that. Oh, that's interesting. But I just feel mm -hmm. like it when I put it like a little inside my brain, I just go click with a little, you know, it, a circle or a square, whatever you want. Just like it's a room inside, and you can't get in here. Okay. And it's like you have to find your own way to make that click yeah, where you yeah. feel like it's just stop. Nobody gets in here. And we sat down. Don't you use the spinny shield? Yeah. We do this one that we call the spinny shield that just, it's like air and it's spinning around you like this. And it's throwing off anything that tries to get in because it's constantly whirling. Uh -huh. That could work. Just whatever works for you. Yeah, I like that. Um, but just, we do it every night before we go to bed. Um, it's good to have a ritual. We talk about the dream stuff. It reminds me of, again, like Freddy, but I would see him as a friend helping against the other. So it's all about your association. <laughs> that but is it's, like the weirdest thing. talking about dreams. <laughs> I love it, though. But um, It's like those Tibetan demons, you know, how they look so very scary, but they chase away bad stuff type of thing. Like, uh, that's yeah, what, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the gargoyles were made to protect. That's right. And I've got them all over my walls. So yeah. you could, uh, the gargoyles are our friends, and they look scary, and they protect from, that's like... Right. But it has to be the right kind of scary, like Baphomet creeps us out. Yeah. And if people are cool with Baphomet, you go for it. I'm not saying it's bad, but it scares us. I don't like it. Right. Um, so it's just like, what do you feel when you see something and what does it do? Mm -hmm. No, I agree. So did you, is it just gone? Like that one just, do you think it was knowing that it was afraid that helped? Uh, no, I, I think he got rid of it. I know he, I mean, it just... I, I had try, I'd tried other things with God, you know, on my own. It wasn't so you think he just he had a special gift? Like? Well, a gift, and he'd been trained. You know, he it, he performed hundreds of these. So how do you know to find the right priest? Like you said, you saw them all week. Um, right. So he was he was the only exorc exorcist I saw. Oh, okay. Everyone else was like just praying, praying and stuff. Me. Yeah. Um, but he was a trained exorcist, and I didn't need an exorcism because it wasn't inside of me. So it wasn't because exorcism is actually yeah. dwelling within you um but it was just attached to me so he's um he got rid of it and i i have actually got rid of stuff from a near-death experience woman as well that's a story for another time yeah but um but that she it worked with her, her those those two are the only two people that have ever been able to help me like, get rid of the stuff